Good evening everyone, my name is Konami25. No affiliation with the gaming company whatsoever. I'm an artist, I'm new to YouTube, and I hope it's not a horrible experience because this is the 15th time I'm trying to record an intro. So basically what we're doing today is we're going to be drawing some Legend of Korra art for another YouTuber called AJ Art. We're doing an art trade between he and I and I really like his stuff. I've been watching him for quite some time now and I've really tried to get the guts to talk to him about the art trade. He's gladly accepted and I'm happy for that. So I have social media. You can check me out at DeviantArt, Tumblr or Facebook. I have a Twitter and Instagram but I'm not very active on those. What else is there? I'm currently open for commissions. I'm doing a special where it's twenty dollars and you get a full commission, meaning that you get a full bodied, full colored with simple background commission. I think you'll enjoy getting one of those commissions, so please, if you have a little spare change lying around and you think you can afford it, I'd really appreciate it. Without further ado, we're gonna get into the drawing. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and talk and not make any mistakes to make this feel like it's a natural experience. I'm going to try and take you through through I'm going to try and take you through my process of how it is that I go about drawing. So here it is that I have my reference sheets. I have all my core references and my pose that I really that I think I want to get down. So to keep it anatomically referenced I'm using just a stock image of somebody at the beach. So I guess this is a great segue to go into tracing. I don't believe in doing this and calling it art. No. Some people might. Some people might. Other people have very differing opinions about what it is that they consider tracing. But what I think helps the person the most is... I guess it can be called tracing, but it's more so using a reference. What I want to do here is I'm going to minimize this picture so I can give myself some drawing space. And I'm going to create a thumbnail. The thumbnail t thumbnailing is something I picked up from another artist called Rajon Dubois. He's another artist. He, I think he has a YouTube channel, but he's mainly just on Twitter and Tumblr. He also goes by the name Kasai, which is where you can find him on Deviant. I think it's K A S A I. Um, amazing artist, and he's living in Japan. And I cannot tell you how much I fanboy over him. But that's enough about him. Thumbnailing. So what thumbnailing is is basically you're taking the picture and you're doing a very small, not too detailed, very rough sketch of what it is that you want. So, got her head, neck, shoulders. Now, at this stage, you don't have to be incredibly accurate. The only thing that we're trying to get is the basic pose. So, I'm using, I'm using a combination of different techniques. Um, for my faces, I normally use Frank Cho as a reference. And Frank Cho's drawing style, I think, comes from another artist known as Andrew Loomis. He's kind of an old-timey guy, but he is basically, in my opinion, the godfather of old-timey drawing advertisements. You know, those ones where, you know, you have the kid, I don't know. Oh, you guys know the sun, I got it, the sunscreen one where that kid has his trousers being pulled by a dog. Well, I'm not saying Andrew Loomis drew that, but that's the type of art I'm talking about. Well, yeah, I I would highly recommend you check out Andrew Loomis's books. They're basically detailing how it is that he goes about drawing things. I would suggest for beginning artists to go with his poor how to draw portraits book. If you learn the basics of face, then essentially you can draw any character it is that you might want to draw. And after you learn the face, you can learn how to do the body. I mean, like, 
when you're that young, you usually spend most of your time drawing the face anyway. Or you don't have to be young, you know, you could just be 20 years old and deciding, you know what, I want to take this art thing up. Anyone can really be an artist, but you just have to have the conviction to continue doing it and improving. Not everyone's going to be good at first, and you're going to meet a lot of people who are younger than you, who are generally better at it than you are. But that's just because they practice more, or they just doodle a lot. They don't really consider it practice, but the more you draw, the more things you figure out about yourself. The things that you like, the things that you don't like, and eventually you can get into making your own style. Now, if you see here with the thumbnail, I'm deviating from the picture a bit because I don't really want Cora to be kneeling or anything. I just like the fact of her looking downwards and cool. And the reason why the thumbnails are important is because, as you can see, the head is disproportionate to the shoulders and the sh torso is a bit smaller than the hips. But that's the miracle of digital art. You can always go back and adjust these things. So what I want now is the arm, just like that, and the other arm, because arms are great. Um, okay then, so we've got the basic thumbnail done, so that's no... I'm going to try and make this somewhat proportionate and palatable. So I'm going to turn off the mic for a little bit because it's kind of hard coming up with topics on the spot. It's fun, but I'll turn it back on. So for now, just enjoy a bit more of the music and I'll see you in a bit.
basically of what I want to do so some important points I wanted to hit on during the thumbnail sketch which you wouldn't have been able to hear because I had paused the audio was when you're do when you're doing any kind of digital art it's always best to do certain things on different layers because at the end of the day you can put those layers into a folder and once you put them into a folder you can move the entire drawing without having to move in individual pieces so I thought that would be a bit helpful for any of those who are thinking about an art program. I definitely recommend Paint Tools Size in that regard. Paint Tools Size is very easy to get the hang of. It's not. It's um. It's very easy for people that use um hand, non-screen tablets and, well, I've been using it for a long time. I know a lot of professionals who use it so. I'm not talking down about other programs. I'm just saying that, you know, when it comes to user friendliness, I definitely recommend Paint Tool Sci as the go to for beginners. I wouldn't, I have Clip Studio Paint as you can see here, and I dished out quite a bit of bucks for it. I only use it for wording because. I have no idea how to adjust my pen pressure and yes there are videos online on how to do that but the best one I've seen is roughly around 30 minutes and I don't think I could th sit down for 30 minutes as of yet so whenever I get around to using Clip Studio for art I'll be sure to make you know so what I'm doing now is I'm basically just trying to get more muscle onto the figure. Korra is a very tomboyish character which is why I like her. I, not to say that I don't like any other girls, I just like the tomboy trait very much. Um, which means she's also has a lot of muscle, she has a decent portion of muscle. She has a very athletic build which is also a body type which is which I favor. Since I have been learning to draw dudes since the era of Dragon Ball Z, most of the women I drew initially were very, let's say for a lack of words, muscular. Very muscular. So, I'm just trying to get a rough idea of how muscular I'm going to make her. She doesn't look 
too muscular. Like I said, she just looks athletic. So might not add a lot, but she definitely has muscle definition, which I'm going to pay close attention to in this. So um, yeah, I used to be an anime artist in that I used to be one of those guys who would tell you that, oh, you know, there's nothing wrong with my drawing. It's just my style. That's how it's supposed to look. So let me use this moment to address any of those people who are of that mindset coming from that place of ignorance. Let me tell you, when people tell you that something is anatomically correct, most of the times they mean that the proportions are off. And I get it. You know, anime, anime culture has off proportions. If you go from animes from the 90s, 70s, the heads are big, wide, and, you know, it's... A cartoony style and yes anime it, I understand that there are people out there who don't like having cartoons compared to anime but let's let's just drop the BS we all know that anime and we all know that anime and cartoons are pretty much the same the only thing is just their origin so, so let's say Japanese animation and Western animation so wait what was I talking about again God damn it. I forgot. Okay then, so let's just move on to another topic because I really can't afford to record something new. Um, oh, so, yeah, I used to draw muscular women. <laughs> I used to draw a muscular woman a lot and it wasn't really pointed anatomical proportioning. That's what I was talking about. Okay then. So artists would always come to me and tell me that, hey, you know, that doesn't look right or this doesn't look like that. And I'll tell them that, hey man, I'm not really looking for realism. I'm just doing an anime. And it, it I think it hinders you as an artist because even anime uses proportioning. Even SpongeBob SquarePants uses proportioning. When you buy a book on how to draw SpongeBob SquarePants or how to draw anime characters, they give you proportions. They compare the proportions to human proportions and then they dwarf them. Dwarf, war, sorry, warp is what I'm looking for. They warp them to suit a comical nature and to make it easy to animate because let's be honest, if I if all if everything was supposed to look like Young Justice, then things would be good. It would just take a long time to come out. So yeah, um, definitely take up realism and anatomy. I know that it's very intimidating to say the least, but it pays off a ton load in the end because you can always copy styles. Like, if you like My Little Pony and you know how to draw a real horse, you can pretty much cut, you can pretty much apply both knowledges to make My Little Pony art. And I don't know why My Little Pony came into my head, but that's what I'm trying to point out. Like, I can do realist, I can do semi realism, which is kind of what this is right now, and I can go cartoon if I want, and that's just because I have an idea of proportioning I know which shapes make up what body parts and I attribute all of that to my time spent trying to learn about anatomy so yeah if you're a, if you're an artist if you're young especially I would suggest jumping on the bandwagon as early as possible it's intimidating at first you don't have to remember all the muscle names you just kind of have to remember how the muscles fit and how they kind of work so that you can get more anatomically accurate pieces which are somewhat more appealing to the general audience yeah so other topics um i wanted to talk about art trades and requests for a bit so what I'm doing right now is an art trade with AJ and what that is basically is two artists decide that hey I like your art you might like my art in most cases they usually like your art it's a mutually like thing and if they don't well you know whatever man but 
it's an offer essentially to say, hey, I want to draw something for you. And in return, I'd like you to draw something for me. Is that something that you would like? Now, now this is a very important point, actually, not to mention it. Whenever you're doing any, whenever you're asking the artist for anything, if it's a commission, if it's a request, if it's an art trade, keep in mind that you are asking the artist. And yes, in cases of commissions, you are paying the artist, but you need to know if the artist is willing to be paid. Is that something that he wants to do? Is it something he, he or she has time to do? Something he or she has time to do. You should not force it on them. You shouldn't let them feel guilty about not taking it. You know, it's at the end of the day, it's their art, it's their time, and it's their bodies that they're using to make the art. So just be cool about it. Say, hey, do you want to do an art trade? Or, hi, I have a request. I'm not sure if you're in, are you interested in doing it? You know, be kind to your artists. There are people too. And in most cases, we're all very sensitive. So, you know, we think about things when we go to our beds at night. So, you know, be kind to your artists. Um, so, yeah, back to art trades. So, yeah, essentially art trades are exactly what I said. You know, I'm interested in your art. You're interested in my art. And I think it'd be mutually beneficial for us to do a trade. And once you get to that point, it's just work, a matter of working out what's your limits. Now, I tend to use a scaling. I would, um, you need to step back, step out of your own shoes and put yourself into the shoes of an onlooker. Look at your art and tell your, and ask yourself, okay then. Is my art satisfactory? Do I like my art? If you say yes, that's a very good thing to have. A very good mentality is to like your own art. Part two is to look at the person that you want to trade with and say, do I like their art? Like, yes, you like their art. You're not losing anything. If anything, you're gaining, you're trying to gain their friendship. So now that we've established that you've liked your art and you like his art, I think you need to establish how far are you willing to go for this art trade. Now some art trades are just sketches, others are line art which is just basically when you make the sketches extremely clean. And some people do full colored trades. Depends on who you are, depends on what time, how much time you have and what it is you're willing to put up. Now. How do you scale yourself against somebody who, let's say, is more along the lines of a professional compared to your art style, but you still want to do a trade with them, and they've agreed to do a trade with you? Well, I think what the first things first is always to ask the artist. Say, hey, always ask the artist, so, you know, um, hey, what are you willing to do? This is what I'm willing to put out. I, I'm content with you putting out anything because you know your art is amazing but you know I just want to know what makes you comfortable getting the comfort level of the person you want to do anything with is like the ideal in the art world you just need to go up to them don't be shy don't be over exaggerative don't be annoyingly cute just say hey um, I am I really want you to do something with me and I want to know if you're comfortable with it. So art trades are pretty straightforward. Don't be a don't be a jerk about asking for them. Don't be offended if the person says that they're not interested. Just ask and move on. So requests requests are a bit different than art trades. The art trades at least two people are benefiting from it that's you and the artist i guess requests can be beneficial in certain cases like in cases of an artist having art block doing requests might help loosen that block a bit or it might give them some opportunities to draw styles that they're not accustomed to 
such like Splatoon style. Splatoon is a very um, it look. I've never played it. It looks fun, but I like the character designs. The inklings look amazing. I like them. So it's a great opportunity to step out of the things that you want to do and just do something for someone else. You get the practice out of it. That person gets a piece of art. And ultimately, if that person likes and shares that piece of art, there's a chance that you might attract some followers, which is always a good thing. So all those people who request art and who ask for art trades, keep in mind, please, you know, you don't, I guess it's not, it's not mandatory that you have to reblog it if you don't like it. But I think the least you could do is do that, especially if the person did it full heartedly, went all out for you. Um, and commissions. Commissions are, are the quintessential portion of every artist's bread and butter. If you are in a position where you can afford to commission an artist, and let me, let me, let me make this very clear what does it mean to afford an artist if you see and follow an artist and you see that that person is open for commissions if commissioning that artist would cost you maybe a day or two's lunch i'm not saying to starve yourself do not take that as the message i'm saying that if you could make a sandwich from home in order to commission this person and just sacrifice a day or two's Chipotle, Chipotle or Wendy's, then I would recommend that you support that artist. I, I think the art world is very undermined at this point in that a lot of people have to be essentially burning out in order to meet quota, in order to get something. And you know, some people deserve all the commissions in the world but they can't get it because you know some people are very attached to their money and don't don't feel bad about about being attached to your money up until recently i was one of you guys i i was very reluctant to spend my money on a piece of art that i would look at it would be nice and it's digital so you know it's just a picture on my computer it's just a picture on my computer. But the thing is that it was a lot more than that. When I commissioned my artist, the artist that I commissioned, I had paid upwards of $40 for it, which was, again, very out of my comfort zone. But at the same time, I looked at the artist's work and I was saying, you know what, this dude is actually really good. I've been following him for quite some time. And I think it's worth it and when i got it it was it was just it was more than just a piece of digital art to me it was having something that i wanted to see manifest in the world without me well i mean like that sounds a bit pretentious but saying without me that piece of art would not have existed somebody else might have requested something similar but it would have not existed without me so basically I was a part of the birthing process. Damn right. So, I would suggest commissioning your artists. If you like their stuff, if you want to see them make more stuff, it, it is essential that you commission your artists. No, I understand that not everybody is in a position where they can commission their artists. You know, some people, most of us who like art happen to be in our teens or, you know, early adults. We don't really have jobs and whatever allowance money we get, we generally tend to not want to spend it, especially on stuff like $60 commissions. No, there's a, no, more than likely you follow more than one artist, more than likely you'll find an artist who's in your price range, but I don't think you should... You can ask an artist if they'd be willing to do something for you for a reduced price. But genuinely, the artist has taken the time and consideration to evaluate their work and also evaluate how much it is that they're willing to take for that work. So usually the set price is normally the set price. 
I don't argue that artists should reduce their costs because I have seen hundred and twenty dollar works which are quite frankly amazing. I've seen hundred and twenty dollar commissions which don't look all like and all that and I've seen commissions that go for maybe like I said forty dollars and they're better than other commissions. You know, it depends on you as an artist and it depends on who is watching you and who's following you. So Commission your artists. Don't don't be reluctant to do it. Everybody needs that extra push, and it puts a smile on an artist's face to know that you know somebody values their work to a degree where they're willing to spend money on it. Now, before you commission an artist, there are a couple of things that you want to do. You want to do your research, and nobody likes that word, but it's true. You have to do your research on who this artist is and what they're well known for. There are people who take their time and they need the time to draw. It's a very long process as this video is already showing you. It's about where what we are 35 minutes in and I am just at the base sketch and I thought it was like 15 minutes. So yeah. So yeah, this is going to be more than three parts apparently. So the person, it takes time to do good art. Some people can do it speedily. Some others, it takes time to do it. It really just depends on your point of view, who's got the better stuff. Let's see, anything off. Oh, I'm flipping the drawing because in anatomy, generally, if you flip something and it looks good coming from both ways, it's a good sign that you're on the right path for anatomical correctness uh, somebody should make a like a thing like you know the sign for the more you know someone should make a, a gif of anatomical correctness and every time you say anatomical correctness it just flashes across the screen yeah that's fun um yeah what else was i saying so yeah, the commission thing has been outblown. Let's move on to another topic. Um, hmm. I play Pokemon Sun and Moon. Favorite Pokemon is Typhlosion. Am I talking about too random of a topic now? I mean, like, I feel like I'm coming off of a serious topic and just going directly into oh hey, I also play Pokemon. Um, Hmm, any other art taboos? Oh, art art thieves are bad. People, if you're going to reblog, if you're going to repost somebody's art on your Facebook, if you're going to make something your background or whatever, the least you could do is ask the artist if it is okay first. In most cases, the artist will say, "Sure, but so long as you don't edit the watermark out or you just make a mention that I was the person that drew it." I have no problem with you using my PewDiePie rainbow dash fan art on your on your on your on your Facebook profile. In some cases, some people don't want their art outside of their outside of their social media because they kind of want to keep track of it. And if you are one of those people who downloads art from the internet and then goes and makes a t-shirt out of it because i see a lot of these advertisements for t-shirts and i'm like i can bet that some of the artists have no idea that their t that their art is being used in a t-shirt you sir are a giant a giant turd turd tunnel i don't want to say the other word but you're a giant turd tunnel I swear to God, like, how do you do that? How do you look at somebody, how do you look at art that's not yours and put that on a shirt and say, you know what, it was my idea to put this on a shirt, so obviously I have to benefit from it. And there's an artist there who's probably starving to get at least one person to pay him like $10 so he can draw something. And here you are making, but you're making, I'm assuming, more than $10 off of something that all you had to do was copy and paste it's very it's very it's very messed up um i think 
that part of the internet is messed up i don't know what would drive anyone to do something so horrible but you know i guess the struggle is real i'm not justifying it either don't take the struggle is real as a form of me saying oh you know as long as you're struggling you know sure go ahead no that's messed up it takes time it takes a lot of hard work to get art done and you're just trying to take that person for granted uh, i guess while we're on it like commissions and shirts you should ask please if you're going to ask your art artist if you're going to ask if you're going to commission your artist it's genuinely a good idea to tell them what it is you're commissioning them for and some artists will do it some artists will ask you what um what do you can i ask what it is that you want the commission for is it for personal enjoyment advertising or business purposes some artists will genuinely ask you what exactly is the comment am i doing this for if you're doing it for a shirt tell the artist because like i said in some cases the artist might say sure um as long as you pay me up front whatever you do with the art is your personal business other artists will tell you okay then if you're doing it for a shirt i think it would be more agreeable if we came to an agreement as to the design of the shirt and if there's a percentage of the profits that i have to that i get to collect and it's not like they want to hold on to it forever it depends on the artist again in my case i have a friend who does shirts and i will design logos for her from time to time and we've come to an agreement that i will offer her my art at a reduced price and when the shirts come out for the first call it i don't know two weeks or so whatever profits whatever profit are not first two weeks, call it the first call it the first i don't know maybe 25 random number shirts first 25 shirts sold i would make like maybe a 15 percent a 50 i'll get 15 percent of the total of the total profit of that and you know we'll go through all those calculations and whatnot but yeah like to those people especially if you're listening to this stream right now i would like to tell you some words but i'm pretty sure i've already messed up with my youtube that with youtube guidelines so don't do stop doing that i mean like it's not like my words are going to stop you but it really hurts the artist a lot when you steal their art and put it on a shirt okay so at this stage i think we're at right now what i'm doing is i have my body structure it looks okay there's nothing that i want to readily change about it nothing that i can see readily maybe this part something looks a bit wonky right here so i'm gonna put a circle there for later reference is it on the same layer don't make sure you always check your layers right here looks like it might need something to i'm not completely sure what anything else no it looks like it looks like those are the only two things that are bothering me slightly and i can forget about those so this will be the first portion of the end of this video meaning that this is you know the end for this i'm going to make another video with the continued process the next time you see this piece of art it might be a little further along than the last time we left it so um, I guess just to give you a good look of where we're coming from. So, bada boom, bada boom, bada boom. So we had our reference. We had our beginning. We had our thumbnail, just using the reference for the basic pose and proportions. Then we added our overall body and you know basic body and we changed something we changed one of the arms to uh, that thing that Cora did to Lynn in the beginning in the first season and we ended up with this so again thank you for watching I've been Konami 25
um, like subscribe and do whatever if you enjoyed this video thank you again for watching check out my social media check out aj art i'll link everything in the description below